Okay, so in one of my last videos where I tried to prove that the derivative of sine of x was cosine of x using the definition of derivatives, I used the Taylor series expansion for sine of x, which was x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x fifth by factorial dot 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 over x. However, there's a fatal flaw in that method, and that is the derivative or the Taylor series of sine of x is based on the derivatives of sine of x. For example, this x here is based on the first derivative of sine of x. This x cubed term is based on the third derivative of sine of x and so on. So technically we can't use this Taylor series to prove that the limit of this is one. We can't use this. So there is an alternate method to evaluating this limit and it involves sort of geometric proof that I will get to later in this video. Before I begin this geometric proof, I will like to, I'd like to give a shout out to Finn Hagen A152 because he's the one that pointed out that one cannot use the Taylor series to prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches zero is one. So let's begin. First of all, draw this. Draw a quarter circle of radius one. Now draw a line straight from the origin to a point on the quarter circle. This isn't a very good quarter circle, but just bear with me. Now, label the origin as point A. Label the intersection of this line to the circle as point B, and label this point as point C. Now, we will draw an extra, we will draw a line straight from point B to point C. And we will draw a line straight up a vertical line from C like this this isn't a very good straight line but just pretend it's a straight line and then extend the line from point A to point B such that it intersects that C vertical line call their intersection point D now we have a triangle here a sector here and another triangle here so let's call the triangle ABC, so triangle ABC, let's call it triangle one. Then we can call the sector, uh, the sector ABC, so I'll just call it sector ABC. I'll just call that, I don't know, T2, why not, even though it's not a triangle. I'll just call it sector. And then the triangle ACD, triangle ACD, I'll call that triangle two. Oops. Okay, so now we will compare the areas of these three shapes. So for triangle ABC, well, let's see here. Let's say that this has an angle X. So we know that area of a triangle, area of a triangle is one half base times height. So the base of AC, so the base is AC for this one. So triangle T1 is equal to one half times AC. And then we want to find this height, which is the altitude of this triangle. The altitude of this triangle, if you just use a bit of trig, you'll find that it's equal to sine of x. So that's equal to sine of x. You multiply or you sub in 1 for ac because the radius of a circle is 1. Just 1 half times 1 times sine of x. I know this seems completely unrelated to our original problem, which is proving that limit as this limit, we're trying to prove this, but just bear with me, we'll get to a good result eventually. So T1 is equal to half sine of x. Now let's get to S. What is S? Well, 
We know that the area of a sector is equal to one half r squared theta. Since it's uniform here, the area is uniform, there's no function. We're just finding simply the area. So that's one half r squared or big R squared theta. That's equal to one half one squared x or one half x. And now we have T2. So T2, we can look at this. Still one half base times height. So base is still one. Now our height, if we just use more trig, we can find that the height is tangent of x. You can verify that on your own. So T2 is one half tangent x. So let me just erase. Let me just erase most of this. I'll just erase everything but what's important. So T1 is equal to one half sine of x. S is equal to one half x. T2 is equal to one half tangent of x. Let me just erase all of this. So now, if we just look at this for a second, we just look at it. We know that this triangle ABC is the smallest one of these three shapes. So we could say T1 is less than or equal to. Now, S, the sector is in between T1 and T2. So we could put S here. These are all areas, just know. Since T1 is T1, S, and T2 are both quantity, the quantity of area. And now, the biggest one of them, this ACD triangle, is T2. So, you know, T1 is less than S, less than T2, or equal. But in this case, it's just less than. So, then we can say that in this triangle, one half sine of x is less than one half x, less than one half tangent x. And the reason why I can use this equal sign is basically, if you're saying like x is equal to or less than one, for example, you're saying x is less than one or x e is equal to one. So, one of these must be true. So if you say x equals zero, then you're saying zero is less than or equal to one, which is true. So basically, T1 must be equal to or less than S. And in this case, it's less than. So it works here. So now, what can we do here? Hmm. Well, we can divide everything by one half sine of x. And, well, what does that do for us? Well, let's, let's find out. So if we divide all of this, we get 1 less than x over sine of x less than tangent x sine of x then tangent of x if you remember, over sine of x, that's equal to sine of x over cosine x for sine x. So we're just left with 1 over cosine x or secant of x. So this statement is equivalent to what 1 is equal to or less than x over sine of x less than 1 over cosine of x. So let me just erase this now. Just erase this now. We're, he we're here now. Now let's take the reciprocal of everything. So we take the reciprocal of A is less than B is less than C. If you recip reciprocate it, then you get one over A, one over B, one over C. So the order of all the signs are flipped. 
So here is no difference. So here we'll have one over one is greater than or equal to sine of x over x is greater than cosine of x over one. So now we get that one sine of x over x is in between cosine x and one. Now, we now have the following statement, which is really close to our final answer. So first of all, let's take the limit as x approaches zero of all of these. So now we have this limit here. So this statement is equivalent to saying one is, we can take all the individual limits first of all. So limit is cosine of x less than or equal to limit as x to zero of sine of x over x is less than or equal to limit x approaches zero of one. So the, just substituting zero into cosine of x, we get one is less than or equal to limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x. That's in between one because Plugging a limit into a constant is just going to get the same constant. So here we have one, the limit of, of x approaching zero of sine of x over x is in between one and one. So using squeeze theorem, so let me just rewrite this at the top. So using squeeze theorem, We can say that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x also must equal 1. And if we just take a look at this, it seems kind of obvious that if one, if we have 1 and 1 here and it's in between 1, the only logical place that there is for sine of x over x is 1. But squeeze theorem just kind of verifies this for us. And therefore, we have proved that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is equal to 1. And we did not use L'Hopital's rule. We did not use Taylor series. Instead, we used this weird triangle to prove this statement. And if you want to see any of the steps, um, you will probably have to go back to the video and freeze it because I went through this pretty fast. Anyhow, thanks for watching.